Okay, class, we want to bring up another subject now in this female reproductive physiology, and that is uh, introducing pheromones. Pheromones are odor molecules produced. They have been seen in animals and in various types. And pheromones can synchronize the menstrual period. Okay, so here, here's the situation. Two females are staying in a dormitory room. Let's say their freshman year. One had a menstrual period not at the same time as another, the other female. But for some reason, after a while, they both start having the menstrual periods at the same time. It appears that pheromones are the cause for that, this dormitory effect. The olfactory system, the smell system, has input to the hypothalamus for the gonadotrophin releasing hormones. Stress and emotions can affect the menstrual cycle. Stress can cause the woman to stop having menstrual periods, amenorrhea. Why is that? Neurons in the limbic system. The limbic system in the brain is the pain and pleasure system, Amyg amygdala, hippocampus, other areas in the that um, can have input to the gonadotrophin releasing hormone. Stress can cause amenorrhea, as I mentioned. Low body fat. It has to do with leptins. It has to do with enzymes within the fat tissue, one being an aromatase. Uh, then you can have a functional amenorrhea. A functional disorder is one in which you actually cannot find a, a, an anatomical defect, but it does produce symptomatology and cessation of, men, of men, menses can cause by inadequate FSH and LH from inadequate gonadotrophin releasing hormone. Why? It's hard to say. And it can come from intense physical exercise, stress, and very low body fat. Okay, class, let's introduce another topic here, and that's contraceptive measures, contraceptive methods. You have, of course, the birth control pill, and it includes synthetic estrogens and progesterones. What it does, basically, to be real honest, what it does, these synthetic estrogen and progesterones inhibit gonadotrophin releasing hormone or factor from the hypothalamus. Which really makes the which really makes the female body think it's pregnant, so there'll be no more ovulation. The uh, endometrium still proliferates because of the estradiol, and you still have progesterone, which which takes you into this luteal phase, and then the birth control pill generally is a 28-day pack with uh, most of the time with seven placebos and so the placebos which means artificial pill uh, with no estrogen progesterone then causes a menstrual period to occur and the pill by having a high level of estrogen the initial pills which had a higher level of estrogen uh, would sometimes stimulate endometrial carcinoma so they've kind of reduced the estrogens and slightly changed them. The rhythm method basically is a method where the, where the male and the female decide approximately when they think they will ov the lady will ovulate and try to not have sex within a uh, pretty much a plus or minus five day period uh, around the ovulation time. And so this can work. Sometimes the person can misjudge their cycle, though. Okay, we'll go further. Changes in basal body temperature. One of the things that occurs at ovulation is a shoot up in the base, slight shoot up in the basal body temperature here. And they use this a lot of time for what we call the infertility workup. Infertility workup is when a woman cannot get pregnant for a year after having unprotected intercourse. And let's say that, uh, that they want to see when they ovulate to have, to, in this case, have sexual relation. Uh, around the time of ovulation, which would increase the chance of the, the female getting pregnant. 
So the basal body temperature chart is a good chart to follow to kind of to figure out when the ovulation is occurring. Okay. Menopause, another subject, is basically when the female stops having periods, characterized by cessation of her activity and it menses. Now, the female can have the menopause and the perimenopausal period. The perimenopausal period, in that particular situation, the female starts having irregular menstrual periods, irregular menstrual periods around, oh, around the late 40s to 50, in, in, in early 50s, generally, of course, you know, different ages for different women. And then fine, but they still are having periods, but they are regular until finally there's no more periods because there's no more ovulation. And that's menopause, characterized by cessation of ovarian activity and menses due to changes in ovaries, not to decrease in FSH and LH, because they come from the anterior pituitary. So the ovary starts giving out. So actually, FSH and LH, based upon the negative feedback aspect, uh, actually start to elevate. They start to elevate because you're not having the negative feedback from the estrogen progesterone. And this generally, this generally occurs around the age of 50, but different women have different, different times. Okay. Symptoms are due to loss of estradiol. The only estrogen found in the body of postmen is the weak estrogen estrone produced by the mesenchymal cells of the fat tissue. Okay. Hot flashes are produced by vasomotor disturbances, particularly in the upper chest and face area. The walls of the urethra and, and vagina atrophy because of not the estrogen, which keeps them nice and uh, mucous membrane aspect. Vaginal glands no longer produce lubrication. After menopause, atherosclerosis osteoporosis because of the effect of estrogen on the bone. Okay. Estradiol is needed for bone deposition. So menopausal women are at an increased risk for osteoporosis. Adipose tissue does not make a weak form of estrogen called estrone. It does make a weak form called estrone. It's a very weak estrogen, not enough to really keep the tissues uh, with an estrogenic effect. Heavier women have reduced risk of osteoporosis. Uh, Two, one reason primarily is because they start out with a higher bone density to start with. And heavy women have more estrogen after menopause. Why is that? Because if, if, the, if the heaviness is due to fat tissue with the aromatase enzyme, then that would convert testosterone to the estrogens, should we say. Okay. All right, class. So estrone is weak estrogen. It's formed from androstene down and dehydroepiandrostene down secreted by the adrenal gland and the zona reticularis. The zona reticularis is the innermost layer of the adrenal cortex. The estrone is formed from androstene down by aromatase. Aromat and one location then is adipose tissue as well as other locations. The more fat tissue, the more estrone. So a heavier woman will have a little more estrogen, even though it's a weaker estrogen. Okay, so fertilization, pregnancy, and parturition. I'm going to end this here and start that later.